Yep. Was the first artist to ever sign with No Limit Records. Let's bring on the one and only Mr. Servon. Mr. Servon, what's, what's good, what's man? Up? I'm good, man. Let's get you, you up on doing? that. Uh, get you up on that big screen. We doing good, man. Appreciate you taking time out to do this. Oh man, it's an honor. Man. So I want to start here. Um, it says your your first appearance was on a Soldier Slim album, and he was then known Magnolia Slim, uh, the Soldier for Life, 1994. Um, can you tell us about how the opportunity came about? Uh, KLC, man, um, drum major, multi platinum producer, man, you know, go down the list of what he's done, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, after mother, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, move, bitch, by Ludacris, you know, so many others, man, make him say, oh, he was my producer. He was Soldier Slim's producer and DJ first. And so, you know, just happened to be on my skills and getting better, you know, under him, under his tutelage. And, you know, of course, Slim was his guy. That was, you know, they were, they were rocking together first. So, you know, I happened to be around there when he was coming, you know, into the basement. Yeah, hello? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, basically, you got a, a feature from, like, a big pun. Um, how how did that come about? How did that work out? Well, uh, Mia had already did something with Fat Joe, and I was always a big fan of Terror Squad, and so and I was a big fan of Pun. And so you know, um, we we you know it's OP. That's what I wanted to do. And you know, Joe and Pun came down to New Orleans at a, at a show at the House of Blues, and you know, Joe, you know, Fat Joe to me is one of the realest. I mean. We hit him up. We went to the show. He was like, "You want me, punk? Definitely. We definitely we talked. We hit it off. And then, you know, I told Pete what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to, I wanted to fulfill a promise from a lot of years ago. You know, concerning New York. And so uh, we made it happen. He made it happen. We did it. We did the video up in New York in the famous, you know, club Tun the Tunnel, and, and we did. Uh, we shot it. Um. Oh man, uh, Times Square, you know, which was one of the, you know, it could be one of probably only a few artists that actually shot their the video in Times Square. I know I was the first Southern artist to really shoot a video in Times Square, in New York. So and that was actually sad to say the late great big pun. That was the last video that he did before his untimely passing. Yeah, I noticed like your your first album it peaked at number five on the R and B charts, yeah. and then the second one went number one. Like, did y'all expect that to be so high on the R and B charts like that? Uh, strategizing wise, you know, we wanted to make sure we were on both charts. You know what I'm saying? And so, but I expected it. You know, my first album you know, going number five and did what it did. And I continue working in between, man, you know, in between albums, you know, something that, you know, we were taught to do and always, you know, only your skills getting better than thinking towards your next album. And so the next one, you know, I mean, that's what I, why I named it the next level because I wanted to go up another level, you know, in this thing of ours. And so, and then that No Limit, number one, Anything less than number one sometimes was not good. Not that people was mad, but you would be disappointed because so many people went number one, number two, you know, less than number five sometimes. You know, it was you you as an artist was like you never want to break that streak. You wanted to not be that one. And so I was just happy that I went from five on one then to number one on the other. And you know, which was crazy because Lauren Hill and R. Kelly held a top spot for a couple of weeks, and then I came and I took that top spot from such legendary artists, and that meant a whole lot to me. Um, can you kind of describe the kind of movement y'all had? Because I mean, y'all y'all really had a, a major movement, you know. I mean, with with no limit, and just just the the synergy every artist seemed to have. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, I think it was family. And it still is family, 
you know, as you know, as some labels kind of depart a ways and and they, the artists don't get along or whatever, we still family. You know what I'm saying? I I weekly, you know, check on, on me or on mama. She'll check on me if she ever heard from me. You know, Kale and I still talk, you know, we all still talk. Silk and I always talking, you know what I mean? So across the board, Fiend, everybody. And so the thing about it with our movement, man, we we strategized, we planned it, we understood, you know, it was more than just saying, okay, we're gonna have some hot music and we hard, we, we, we street and all this other stuff and we supposed to you supposed to accept it. You know, you know, my, my my former boss man, you know, Master P was a very strategic guy. You know what I'm saying? And I, I tell young artists these days, don't just release, be strategic. Strategize your release. You know, nobody owes you anything. And that's what he used to always tell us. Nobody owes you to listen to your stuff, though. You have you have to make them want to listen to it. You have to put in the work. And then we strategize because we would pay attention to certain regions and who was big in those regions. And back then, you're looking at wherever Pac, Pac sell, God bless the dead, we knew we, we could sell. Ice Cube sell, Scarface, we knew we could sell. You know, we understood the Midwest, which was such a strong region, you know, that that supported the South, supported the West, Midwest supported basically everyone, you know. And so, you know, we understood that we had to take regions, you know, by region, region by region. And, you know, and then we understood the South, you know, so many states, we know we can just go along, go along in the South, <coughs> Texas, go, go along in Texas. They Florida artists used to go go along in Florida. So we understood those demographics. You know, it's more than just music, it's a business. So, you know, and that that's what the movement was about. And I think we also were we were for the the, the look I I was well, Pete say this, man, it was funny. And I really, you know, it's the truth. We felt like we were for that guy that had the cutlass with, with two speakers in it, man. You know what I'm saying? And 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 yeah. you know, and he 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 taking care of child support, man. But you know, and he gonna go buy instead of buying sixty sixty box of pampers, he's gonna go down and get a thirty six, man, so he can get our CD. You know, we we felt like we was for that guy. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't saying we want the guys that's popping bottles and all that. Because if you notice, we never had really big party songs. You know, we was we was more of that reality. You feel what I'm saying? Now you sold. You were three thousand copies shy of selling three hundred thousand your first week. Um, that was independent, right? Yeah, that was independent. No limit was still, you know, still independent. Just had distribution, independent, ind- independently owned, P owned everything. What were y'all doing differently? I mean, those are like major label numbers right there. Because what we, was again? What was, okay, go ahead. You can. Good. No, I was just gonna say, what were y'all doing so much differently that nobody else was doing? I mean, you got major artists that wasn't even put pushing those kind of okay. numbers. We would sit down. He would sit down and look for sound scan, and he would look at, like I said, say Tupac, you know, put something out, right? And he's looking at the cities. We're now gonna go to them cities, and we're going to push hard. Our street teams, to go back to the grassroots of it, you know, we had street teams in every city. You know, we Man. also, he, he was real smart on on on, on the situation, we moved the box. Remember the box with all the videos on, right? So yeah. what we would do is, if I knew both of you guys, right, he'd be like, who you know in this city, that city? I'll tell him, okay, I've known both of these guys, right? Out in North Carolina, this part in this and that, right? We'll, I'll call you and say, look, how much your phone bill is? You know, and you might say, oh, man, why? It's about $70, $80 a month back then, right? And I would say, what if I give you $250, $150 yours, and the other $100, $150 for you to pay your phone bill, keep the rest, and then the other 100 I want you to order. I'm about at the video all day. And it was going to be basically was paying your phone bill plus whatever you charge on the box. So what that did was, you know, and we did we did mental marketing. And what I mean by that is, now, if you've seen that video all day, then you get in your car and then we done pay for commercials in your city because we know you're working and doing what you got to do on the box. Now you're hearing about it again, right? So that's two yeah. times. So it's now it's in your mind. But then our street teams, right? 
I was three teams with basically how you doing, sweetie? I was three teams with basically oh I'm sorry, my daughter. This I was fun. three teams with ba- would basically go out and we also would and I felt like it was a good gesture. It was even exchange, you know, a border system where, you know, people that are homeless, you know, you're gonna see them every day. They're gonna have the same clothes on. So we would go give them three, four unbounded shirts. And then we okay. also would give them fifty, seventy five, a hundred dollars. Right? Man. And yeah. so now you gotta think about what I'm saying to you. You watch the video on TV. Yeah. Then you get in the car and you hit a commercial. Then yeah. you pull up to a light and there's somebody standing there with an unbounded shirt on. Yeah. Now what does that do to your mind? I it mean, you say, yeah. You bout about it. Check. <laughs> there you go. Let me and let me check what it is. So we're we're catching you at every angle. And so we knew how to do that. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, but we would we would go to several different regions. We wasn't artists that would just, okay, I only come there when my album come out and I got a show. No, we come into your city when we don't have a show. We going in every area. We always had connection. You guys might have been I was three guys out there. Okay, look, we wanna go to this club tonight to go meet this DJ. We wanna go. You might say, "Man, nah, it's, it's it's gangster over there. Don't go over there." Like, nah, we going. We want them to, you know, we want them to see us. So we would be in every project. We'd be in every every hood. It didn't matter, you know what I'm saying? And we come, we come with respect, but we let them know we're there. And then we giving, giving away stuff. You know what I'm saying? Making sure, you know, letting them know like we we here, man. We different from you. You know, we 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 do music, but we want y'all to know we do music for y'all just as much. Y'all can see us. Y'all gonna remember us. And that was our strategy. We we had that grab grassroots in the face marketing, and everybody was gonna make money. You the you the promoter, the street team guy, the people working the, in the mom and pops, you know, the people in the clubs or whatever, would not. You know, we're hire somebody you might know and just say, okay, we want him to put flies on around around the city on every car. And then we would hit. Pay, pay you guys to do the posters so basically every the way you turn you hear us and you see us and sooner or later the mind the mind of any in the any human being is going to be like man it's in my mind wait a minute well let me go check this out let me go to the store and get this cd and then once they got it and i think we spoke for the little guy you know what i'm saying we we from the south but we had some saying you know especially me saying charlotte you know saying you know Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah. Throwing, we we talk in these cities that nobody really said, said, you know, cared about. But we cared because we hit every last one of them. And that was most of, you know, our biggest strategy. Man, y'all are killing it, yeah. So what, what do you think your, your kind of biggest tour was? As far as touring? Man, I mean, what we're going to say biggest was... Uh, especially when Ghetto D came out and then Snoop came to us, you know what I'm saying? And and now we, we're in, we're in 40, 50, 60, 70,000 seat arenas and, and, and selling them out. You know what I mean? Those, those were, you know what I'm saying? Those were the biggest ones when, when P album Ghetto D came out because that was such a big album, monumental album, you know, and things like that, you know, so that to me would always be the biggest, you know, most special one was our last one that we just went on. That was special. And then before, before, before the big, big one, you know, when we was just trying to make our way, you know, when we come in the cities and we go into one way in, one way out spots. Well, you know what I mean? And it's, you know, I mean, you got to walk through the crowd. You got to be, you got to man up. Ain't no artists. You coming through the back door and 50 people security. Yeah, we had a lot of people with us, but that was us artists and our, you know, and our guys, but we walked through the crowd. We made a presence, not disrespecting. We like let them know, like you can touch us. We right here. We're not. We're not. Okay, I just want y'all ticket money. Come to the show, and you can see me on stage. But you can't touch me. You can't say what's up to me. Nah, we we set a precedence, and I remember that, and that meant a lot because that's what rap supposed to be. You know, because your your fans and your list. I don't like saying fans. I call them family. You know, your, your family, you know, your support family, you know, they the reason we are who we are. So why can't they be near you? Why can't they see you? Why can't they look up and say, whoa, what's up, man? That's such and such, man. That's... And they come, we coming through. And then we hit the stage, we rock, and then we come right back through with them 
into the parking lot. Holler at them, talk, whatever, and then get in our veins and, and we go ahead on to the next city. But they'll, they'll know that, man, them dudes is all right. And they're not afraid. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? And that's what, that's, I, I love that when we first started. You don't hear too many artists talk about um, the fans as family too much, man. I mean, that's a beautiful thing to really hear because, like you said, they, yep. they keep these artists, you know, and they flashy lifestyles and stuff like that. Um, I, it says you wrote a book in 2008 for a dating book for black women. What was that like about without giving too much up? It actually was, it's crazy. It was actually a three part book and I slipped up, man, because before Steve Harvey put Think Like a Man out that was based on his book in the movie, uh -huh. I wrote this book because it, it originally started as, um, it originally started as erotic poetry, right? You know what I'm saying? And so then I start putting, start going to erotic stories, right? And I'm like, you know, because it's called Sexy Black Thoughts. And mm. then I just, I happened to be in a restaurant one night and I was by myself eating. You know, I used to, you know, do that. You know, I was, at that point in time, I was a single man, so I used to just go eat by myself. And it was a table full of ladies, right? And they're calling men dogs and this, that, and that. And I'm just, and cheaters. And I'm, I'm sitting there like, man, I'm just tired of that, man. So, I laughed, and one of them was like, what you laughing at? I said, if I explain to you, you know, where it's, it's really more your fault if a man does you wrong than the man that does it. And when I sat there, it was like I said, and if y'all don't agree, I'll buy the whole table of drinks and pay for your food. When I sat down and explained to them, which basically was giving the code, you know what I'm saying, to with men, you know what I'm saying, the man's code. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so... You know, basically, it was like they sat there and they couldn't say anything. And I was like, nah, I'm going to still take care of y'all, y'all food and y'all drink. And that made me walk away and say, I'm tired. I'm about to sit here and say, come do a book called Let's Talk from a Black Man to a Black Woman. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to give you all the codes. Now, if you still go out there and, and deal with the wrong man and have a bad relationship in the situation, you know what I'm saying? Then I don't know what else to tell you. You know, and so I broke down everything and I, and I decided to turn, you know, the book into, you know, a full book and um, and, and just combined it completely. And so I really printed it up and it sold. I did like 3000 copies, like just hand to hand one weekend at Essence Fest down here, which generates almost two, three hundred thousand women come to the city. Excuse me. <clears throat> and. So now I really revised it and I'm actually going to re-release it. Audio and then in the story. That's what's stores. up. You got another question, Jay? Because if not, yeah, I got another well, one for him. Uh, you can go ahead with yours. And then I'll, I'll, okay, so I, I noticed your, your, uh, your philanthropy, you do the, the gun buyback program in New Orleans. You still involved with that? Uh... I'm I'm involved in extensions from it. We did a we did a gun buyback um like twenty thirteen and it was very successful because we were on Thanksgiving and you know, I think a lot it helped a lot of guys, you know what I'm saying? And it got guns off the street and I got to meet a lot of, you know, people and then I turned it into a free studio for troubled youth. And okay. you know, which you know, which we had standards that I set there, you know, you can come and record and and you get, you know, my advice you needed or whatever would not as long as you have a job, the young man, or go and get your GED or in school and at least do attending. And man, you know, it taught me so much, man, because you know, a lot of these young young men that people think is just lost and they just nothing. It was all about having somebody showing them that look, I care, I got you. You know what I'm saying? And and then teaching them conflict resolution. You know, because we lack that so much in the black community. That's why a lot of things turn so violent. And so, you know, and then a lot of them, I was finding out they had not just, you know, everybody want to be a rapper or a ball player. And I understand that, you know, but I start finding guys in there that were hell of an artist, drawing, sketching, painting. But they didn't, they was too, they was, you know, as we say, gangster. They didn't want nobody to know they have these skills. And one guy, I mean, yeah. he's, he's a chef. He's a chef to this day. You know what I'm saying? And one guy does this for construction sites. You know, and, and you know what I mean? And, and that was very, that's one of the most important things I ever did. 
And I saw the effect because when I closed it, not closed it, but we trans over because people, you know, you know, how people can be, you know, business and how they, you know, it just didn't go right with them. And I was about the kids. They were more about money and grant monies and stuff like that. And so long story short, two weeks later, two of the brothers that used to come in there between seven and 10, I used to personally make sure they studio time was seven to 10 to keep them off the streets. They were murdered on the same corner, block and half away from the studio. You know, and so, but, but overall, man, that was one of the best things I did that I felt like, you know, like this is what's needed. And you had a couple of acting uh, parts and a, appeared in a, a documentary um, called uh, We Are One, the Street Music of New Orleans. Um, just kind of tell me the process, you know, man, of getting into those films. Did you kind of catch the acting bug after that or just kind of get it out? Or? Well, actually, man, you know, by being on the movies with no limit, you had no choice with Pete. And it was like, you playing this role. Like, I, I don't, you know, <laughs> just try it. And then he has a way of saying, it's going to add to what you're doing with music. Put another hat on. He used to always say that. When he would talk to us about doing businesses, you got you wear the rapper hat, you wear the dad hat, you know what I'm saying? At the time you wear the husband hat, you wear the son hat. He said, now put on another hat that's gonna 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 even extend past music. When you think and most times rappers you think gonna do music for a long, long time. And his thing was you're gonna transition into to movies, whether you're writing them or in them. And so I started, I'm a type of person, man. I like to watch what you're doing. I like to learn. I tell people that on Instagram now when they apply, when I put up posts about things, like everything about politics right now. And they, they think they're getting smart with me. And I'm like, well, give me facts. And then when they give me the facts, and I'll be like, thank you. I appreciate it because I'm going to research it. I'm going to learn it. And so watching P do, do, do the movies and things like that, and then have us in them, and then watching the whole process, man, it was it was something that interests me you know, so much. And, and, and so I did, I did enjoy acting and I, I would have took it, t- should have taken it serious even more because a lot of people always ask me, you know, why you didn't get into it because you did well with it. And me being me, man, I decided I want to be behind the scenes. I want, I want to, you know, if anything, I want to write scripts. You know, I want to go find the next young dude and put him in the role of a producer, a director, you know what I'm saying? Cin- cinematography you know, and things like that. And because I, I like putting things together. I like putting people together to create something great. You know, so I still deal with it. We actually deal with it in a big way. We have a we have a movie stream map coming, you know, along under my, you know, brand Vibe Will Vibe T V coming real soon. So it's gonna be a movie streaming site and and you know, you guys build up upload their videos and things like that up to it. So I'm getting back into it, but I'm getting back into it more on the sitting back in the chair you know what i'm saying how hard was it trying to make it coming out of new orleans for me it was even harder than most artists be uh, that from new orleans because i'm from new orleans but i started rapping on east coast when i was in the military okay so you know i had more of a i had a down set down south dialect you know speak you know the words i use which is where i'm from New Orleans, but then I had more of an East Coast style. And so when I came back to New Orleans, New Orleans has always been, you know, people say New York, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. New Orleans is similar to New York. They only listen to their own, you know, and then at that time, Bounce was real big, you know what I'm saying? And and so me coming home and I tongue twist a lot rap wise, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that wasn't something they was doing down there. So it was more or less like, I don't fit in here. You know, and so my thing was, you know, but it was hard because New Orleans had so much talent that, you know, you know of cash money, you know of, you know, no limit. But New Orleans had some some artist man from my day that would have been during that time <laughs> was some of man. They were serious. Man. I mean, you know, someone no longer with us like Tim Smooth. He was one of the best to ever do it. You know, Gregory D. He's still alive. You know, he's he's one he's one of the legends, man. I mean, ERC, you know, a friend of mine's man, uh 
one of my rap idols down there, MC Dot, who is a straight lyricist and a producer, as well as a very talented. You might have a, a dude that produces hits, but he's better than he's a better rapper than a whole lot of rappers. You know, at, you know, as like today with us in New Orleans, we have some talented young dudes, and it's it's hard to make it out because, you know. If you make it out alive, you know, that's that was one thing back then. That was hard because, you know, the way the city of New Orleans is, sad to say. And then New Orleans guys are very independent. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's like, I'm going to do it, you do it, so it's going to be 100 and then doing it. Instead of maybe coming together and do some things, they stand on up. They stand on a good arrogance, I would say, because there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm me. I'm, I'm, I'm different from you. I'm me. And and I think, you know, that made it even harder because your mindset was to always be competitive. So you rarely had groups. And the groups we had were some of the most legendary, the UNLBs, the PNCs, the boot camp clique, you know, J-Dog and Black Menace, you know, Green and the Posse, you know, several groups, you know, uh, down there. Even Manny Fresh was, was part of a group that's legendary, um, you know, uh, the Ninja Crew. And so... <laughs> You know, but that was rare in New Orleans because New Orleans was more individuals. So, yeah, it was hard getting it was hard making it, you know, as far as being a rap artist in New Orleans, because they had their clicks down there and you had to fit in and you had to really be about you had to be about your business when it come to rap. It was they were serious, it was very serious. Do you think uh, Cash Money basically uh, saw y'all's formula and took it and ran with it? No, nah, they, you know, honestly, and I always tell people this, man, and, and I was just actually with a, a artist that was on Cash Money before they went national, uh-huh. you know, made a little comment, and they, some of them threw them little comments where they like, oh, No Limit was whack, this and that, and Cash Money was just that. We opened the door. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But they was already coming. They had an independent form. The baby and Slim was geniuses, and they had, they had, they had the same type of roster, basically, we had. And, you know, so they were already doing it and P was doing it up in California. So it was like they was doing it at the same time, different regions. And so, you know, so when you saw Cash Money, you only saw what they've always been doing. Because there yeah. was another label in New Orleans called Big Boy that was huge. That's where mm-hmm. Mystical was at first. And the J-Dog, you know, J-Dog Black Menace, who's one of the best to ever do it to me. And Tim Smooth, you know, I mean, and things like that. So, no, nah, they didn't they didn't take our form. I mean... They, you know, I could see, I know they watched business wise, you know, yeah. but they already was who they were. And I think they learned to from us. The only thing I feel they learned from us is they watched how we, you know, did one major album, then drop, drop, drop. You know what I'm saying? And putting the music out and, and hustling through it. And, and Baby was such, especially Slim, his brother Slim, he's real quiet. But Slim is a mastermind. Yeah. And, and, you know, people see the flair with Baby, you know what I'm saying, which, you know, I grew up with Baby. That's my, you know, that's my guy. And um, we actually play, and I tell people that we play basketball together, football together, baseball together. And I know people be surprised. He was he <laughs> a hell of an athlete, though. He was a hell of an athlete. No, no, no joke, he? no game. Okay. Oh, damn. Handles on the basketball court, handles on the, that's on, crazy. the football, on the football court, on the football field would knock your helmet off you. Played mm. baseball, was a right, right in the right field. I was in the left field. You know what I'm saying? So, but I know when people look at him, they just see he gangster. Nah, man, dude was a hell of an athlete. Yeah, I wouldn't but, think um, he played baseball at all. Nah, he played. Yeah, he was. He played. He was. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was in. No, he was. He was a shortstop. Shortstop. Okay. Shortstop. Wow. And I was. I was in left field. His brother was in right field. God rest the dead. But I think that. Baby was smart enough to watch how we were doing what we were doing, and I was fine. You know what I'm saying? But they already was doing their thing, man. I'm going to never take nothing from them to say they copied of us. They just, they played the game right. We kicked the door open. They got their deal. They, they handled their business. And then they came and they brought they, they thing to, to rap. And you were, um, at one time, they were talking about that y'all were both, basically, basically both labels were in the room. And and possibly y'all could have basically forged an even bigger conglomerate together, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, because I think from what I understand, I think they were going to uh was looking at being with party or whatever, whatnot. But you know, New Orleans is 
New Orleans is we're very territorial. So it probably wouldn't have been something that would have would have worked. And it was good that they got their deal where they got it. We had I was where we was at. And, you know, they got to forge who they were. And they didn't have to have the the thing of saying, okay, no limit doing this, so we expecting y'all to be this way. You know, they did it their way. I mean, a lot of people always say, man, if y'all just did a tour together, yeah, that would have been beautiful because all of us as artists were friends. We still, we was cool. Outside of people saying it was beef, no, wasn't no beef, man. If you're from New Orleans, you're no beef. If body's not dropping, it's not beef. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't even have no beef when when Snoop was over there from Shug at all, did y'all? I don't remember no, nothing from Shug. Not really. I mean, they a couple of guys, I think it was on one of the, the documentaries, you know, tried to get at Snoop, you know, in, in, the, in the back while we were on stage in L.A. And we got off stage and, you know what I'm saying, and they were going or whatever not. And, you know, and, and P spoke what he had to speak, you know what I'm saying, and, and all that was done with, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we we the type of people, man, and there's no disrespect. We look at it like this. We don't bother you, don't bother us. You bother us, then deal with what comes with it. You know, and, and I think with that role, you know, never had no issues with none of them guys. You know, I watched interviews of some of them that were on there, man, and you know, I had maybe one comment towards uh to the guy Reggie Wright once he said something, you know, when he said C Murder's name and I you know, I just corrected him. He, you know, like he keep his keep his name out your mouth. But I'm cool with dude. I have no issues with him because we don't we never got down like that. You know, and let me we, we, we didn't talk about anybody because we we always had a rule, real men don't talk about other men on on album, on music. So we stayed away from that, you know, and we still live by that today. You know, if I got a problem with you, you can say something about me on the song. I'm not going to say nothing back. Now, you got we got to see each other. We, we have that conversation. And I'm not saying no, it's physical, but we have that conversation. You know what I'm saying? So you keep my, my name out your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. And that's the way we were. And that's the way the rules we live by. So we didn't really have no issues with them at all. Do you got any new music on the way? Actually, I did something, man. I'm on my grown man, man. I put out uh, a new single, Let Me Be The One, featuring a super artist, man, Naya, out of Detroit. Uh, she is, you know, she's awesome. And I'm doing some work with uh, Miss Jackson Media Group. And she has an awesome album I call Experience. And she has, a, a, you know, with a multitude of artists on there, man, Tony Bosco, my boo, she, She's going to be one. I mean, the voice on this young lady, Naya, you know, Tony Bosco from the East Coast, man, awesome artist, you know, um, CMT production. It's, it's, it's going back to the old days, and I'm working with them, doing some consulting. But now she's talked me into doing four or five more songs with this with this grown feel, you know, which you call it vibes, you know what I'm saying? Grown vibes or whatever, whatnot. And, I like it. I like the style of it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was always a neo soul type guy. So I listened to more rap and neo soul than I did. I mean, neo soul and R and B than I did the rap. So I like it. I'm not singing. Trust me, y'all want to do. That. I'm not going to do myself. I, do <laughs> I got one more question. Uh, we posted in the Reddit uh, your album. It seems like Heaven Is So Close is like. The song that most uh, fans always talk about. You think that's like the song that most fans uh, typically cling on to? I think because, you know, I always believe, man, that when I did music, I know what type of artist I was. You know, I, I, Scarface was one of my rap artists, the, the biggest one. You know, that's that he, I idolized him. So, you know, that's why you're Mr. Servo, Mr. Scarface. You know, that's where that really come from. So I've always been a more 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 pain, you know, in, in listening to pop. And so heaven was so and so close was where, you know, with a moment and I think a lot of people felt it because we were going through a time at that time, especially New Orleans was like the North capital of the world. And, you know, the United States, whatever. And I lost my cousin, I lost two friends, yeah. that two brothers that were killed at the same time along with 
there uh, with, with one of with one of my guys, his girlfriend was pregnant with twins. They, they were all killed at the same time. And so to me, it was just like, man, I'm, uh, you know, my thing was like heaven is, is like, man, it's, it's right here. You seeing it, you living, you living in it. You know what I'm saying? You might say, well, man, how are you living in heaven? Because you just feel like you're that close. You know, you're that close to death. And at that time, that's what I was feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, it's close because I know I was a good person. So I think I'm end up in heaven. So it's like, you know, it's close. And that's what that song was about. And I think people lose so many people. It makes you look in the mirror and say, oh, you next. You know, and I think people feel that, you know what I'm saying? And they felt my pain. They felt my anger, you know, in the, in the song. And, and and the thing about it was crazy was a prayer that, you know, the young lady, Kenya Miller from, she's from Dallas, where she sung, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray to love, you know what I'm saying? She sung that because that was a, you know, that was a prayer my mother taught me to always, you know, say before I go to sleep, you know? And so she knew that and we, we intertwine all that. And I think people feel that, you know, felt that a lot. Yeah, we just lost DJ Polo and Chino XL in a matter of like Man. three or four days, you know what I'm saying? Man. Yeah. Rap and Chino XL was people for the young ones out there. You talking about lyricists? You talking about get it? Oh my God. Yes. He, he that's my generation, man. He was he was not nice. I, I I I remember having his album and just like and I was in the military and I'm like, man, this dude's going off. You know, and it's sad though because we're losing so many, you know, like the little young kid, Julio Fulio. Yeah. That hits me hard with these young dudes. And I, I, I did a song. I do songs every other day because Pac said, Pac once said, every day of your life is a song. You have no reason not to finish the album. So every day of your life is a song. And so I do a song or a song with a hook basically every day or every other day and just put it in folders. And I said something in a song once with these young artists of today. You know, they'll get a bunch of likes and a bunch of clicks, but they'll never get to see what it feel like to be in such so loud arenas. You know what I'm saying? And everybody loving you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's sad to see a lot of them don't get to to make it to see that feeling, dude, to walk on, you know, to walk on a stage and 30,000 people know you and they love you. They'll probably fight for you, right? I mean, if you if you fell out or passed out, man, they will rush the stage. They'll take your body, probably bring you to the hospital. That's how much the fans, you know, love these artists. And a lot of these artists, young dudes, don't even get to see that. Don't even get to see that feeling. Don't get to feel riding away from an arena in another city like, man, you saw the person in the front row. You saw that one in the corner. He knew every word. That one was crying. They never get to feel that because, you know, they're losing their life. You know what I'm saying? And so we losing so many in rap, man. You know, whether it's health, you know, we about to start pushing that about, you know, men's health. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully a lot yeah. of people start listening to start taking care of their, their physical health and their mental health. And you know, and then the ones that are losing it because they still want to have a foot back in the street. We got to figure out how to get these young dudes to say, man, just do your music. Take care of your family. Stay home. You know, you, you ain't, what you got to prove? You ain't got to go out there. Go out there when you go do these shows. Go out there and talk to young kids, man, and, and show them the right way. Take care of your community. But stay away from all that other stuff. We losing too many. Hold on. So, uh, Let's get you out on this, man. Any other shout outs you want to give? Any other projects you got? Oh man. Oh, big time, man. Um, my you know, Brandon, my my, my label in print, Vibe World. It's gonna be pretty huge. We got Vibe World Vibe TV. We got Vibe World Vibe streaming app. We got Vibe World Audio, which is my headphones. Make sure you guys have some. But they're special headphones, man. We're gonna do some things to help artists make money again. Well, all this can have their own headphones distributed through my company, you know, and labels can have their own headphones. It's media, you know, um, my guy Spud out there, um, you know, Miss um, Jackson Media Group, again, experience, get the album, you know, my city in New Orleans, man. And, 
and also, man, that that you know, we 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 doing education, earphones, everything vibe with you guys gonna see, man. Like I got I got the vibe vision shades on right now, you got small glass shades and stuff like that. that's what I'm talking to y'all too. So I'm into the audio world man, and everything else and making sure artists make money again, helping them make money again. Um, we, we have a lot coming up, men's health, things that we're doing, and, and we have a sports agency, uh, Vibe World Sports Agency. Uh, Bryce Oliver, he's at Tennessee, the Titans, and we got Lance Robinson up at Cincinnati. And we gonna, you know, we got a young kid out in Atlanta. Uh, he's in the 10th grade. He's going to be one of them. He's 6'8". He plays basketball. You know, his name is Jalen Singh. We have we 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 doing a lot of things, man. But one of the things that I'm really pushing, and I want to say this, and I'm, I know y'all show is huge, man. And I appreciate y'all. Please do not forget the elderly. Check on the elderly in your community. Check on the elderly in your family. Okay. You know, do not forget them. As this country forgets them. And I want you guys out there, the man. If you call yourself and you're a rapper and you say you love your block, block and you scream your block. Go check on the elderly. Go see if they need some water. See if they need something. Single mothers in, on your block where you scream at and you, and you say you ride or die. This is where you're from. Show the love you need to. Go help those single single, single mothers or single fathers on your neighborhood. Make sure your block is straight. You know what I'm saying? If not, then don't don't tell me where you're from. Don't even say it. I don't want to hear it. If we, you know, we, we, we as a rap artist, yeah, we, you know, we didn't want to, you know, we didn't know we'd be role models, but we, we, it's what it is. And, you know, oh. so take care of your neighborhood. And that's what I would basically tell people in my, especially my black community, get out to vote. If we're not a part of the agenda out there, we need to create our own agenda, create our better America. You know, in this period, vote period, this is, this is important, a very important election. You know, in, in my black community, I want them to get more into, to, to, to politics. I want them to get into financial literacy. I want them to start understanding what their social security number really is and what it can do to better them and get them out of poverty. You know, so yeah. we're we're on a lot over here, man. So but I want to say to you guys real quick, I want to tell you thank you because you guys are appreciate it. More than just podcast thank guys. Yeah. See a lot of podcast guys and I tell them when I do it, I'm gonna tell y'all real quick. Y'all are our own media. We finally got our own media. CNN Mike Call me, you know, you never know. But you guys are the reason we now can speak our truth, our voices. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are very, very important. We have our own media. The culture has its own media, and it's because of guys like you. So don't ever think, if you ever have a moment thinking, man, this is my little still, it's cool. Nah, it's not little. You guys are very important, man. You understand Appreciate what I'm that, saying? Man. And keep doing what yeah, you're yeah. doing and promise me, both of y'all, as long as y'all doing that. Y'all gonna get a youngster and 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 teach him what y'all doing and how y'all doing it and bring him up in time. You know what I'm saying? And pass it on and keep it going. But I appreciate you guys, man. All the other podcasts, man, and I appreciate you guys, especially because I'm on with you guys. But but just know how important you guys are and keep it up, man. Appreciate, appreciate it, man. We appreciate you taking time out, man, to do this. Definitely, man. It's an honor, man. I'm a, my my guy was getting at me hard. He was he getting me to make sure I was gonna get on. <laughs> so, but I love that man. More more people need to be that way business wise. If you ain't gonna yeah. fight for your business, why have it? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? So definitely. Man. All right. Well, you a friend of the show, man. I'm definitely gonna hit you up. Um, I think I already follow you on Facebook or whatnot, and I'm gonna make sure I give you our contact information. We also do music reviews as well. We do live music reviews on Saturdays. If you're interested in that, and Definitely, man, man. I gotta, I gotta send you some. I got, I would love to link y'all guys with some of the young artists out in New Orleans. That too, okay. that too, yeah, I'm that big, too, yeah, Definitely. yeah. I do got, a blog got, as got, well. So. We got a few, man. We got the co youngins down there, man. We got, we got some, we got some, some strong artists, man. Young artists, and I want, I want to get them in the structure like this. Get their music on, on new music, and and possibly get an interview with you guys. You know what I'm saying? So I want to start helping a lot of the young young artists down there, man. And so, you know, definitely. Man. So we would definitely let's whatever I could do for you guys. If you need anything I can do, it'd be an honor to help. All right, well, we appreciate it, man. And you have a nice night, man. All right, God bless, man. See y'all right, later, man. You too. All right, peace. Peace. Well, there you go. Another one in the books. Uh, man, he's a really uh genuinely great guy, man.
we're interviewing a lot of great people, man. And, and, and to be inspirational, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, and be humble. Really and decent humble. human being. I meant to ask him, did he come through Fayetteville, Fort Bragg at all? Because he was in a, he said he was in the military. You could tell he yeah. was in the military when he was talking about the elderly and stuff, you know? That's like a, a patriotic talking point. And I ain't want to. I didn't want to ask who he was voting for because then we would have, <laughs> it would have probably been a long conversation after that yeah. and whatnot. But uh, I do, I do agree <laughs> this election is, is, is crazy. And did you actually listen to a lot of No Limit coming up? Yeah, man, definitely. Um, you know, I switched off listening to uh, a lot of No Limit, a lot of West Coast and a lot of down South, well, specifically No Limit. Um, stuff when I went off to college and I was doing shows up in uh, Rhode Island and stuff like that because you know a lot of the college shows were playing um, you know sound alikes like 15 million different sound alikes that sounded like Mob Deep or uh, Wu Tang at the time because that's what was popping. So to hear something different and get a different perspective, I was definitely on you know No Limit, definitely listening to Master P and and Mystical. And mystical before he got, you know, to um, to no limit. So that's that's why I was definitely familiar with the cats he was talking about, like uh, uh, T Smooth and you know Big Time Records, because you know a, <coughs> a different different vibe. So you know, I, I, I love the way it was moving. You know, what I mean, I almost almost wished at one point, you know, what I'm saying I, I would have got on that bus. And took that ride down to Baton Rouge to see if I got to got me a deal out there, you know, not just for the music, but for for the information. Because you know what he was talking about, as far as like he really trying to instill like facts, and information, and build people yeah. up and teach them how to basically teach them how to fish. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the thing you don't get from any label or anywhere else. That's why. I mean, No Limit was the ultimate independent label, though. They were, like, the ultimate independent label. And Master P, like, I remember, like, I was thinking about this earlier, man, when I was walking the dog. I mean, a lot of people would say Master P couldn't rap and he was whack, but damn it if if he didn't build a conglomerate, man. I mean, he got his son. Even he blew his son up where his son was getting that Nickelodeon money. I mean, both of his brothers, you know, he put on. Uh, I mean, they had so many art. The only other le- crew, like, see, that's the thing. Wu Tang didn't even have Wu Tang records where everybody was signed to Wu Tang records. Like, P had No Limit records, and there was a gang of people signed with No Limit records, man. And I mean, you business- had the twins too, Kane and Abel, right? Ain't yep, that the only? Yep. yep. And his business I mean- game is crazy. I mean, before everybody else got on trying to do other things outside of music, he had yeah. no limit phones. He had no limit realty. He had no limit sports management. He had the films. I mean. Uh, Mr. Servon tuned in on Instagram. He said, I said favor on a song. Uh, Yeah. Like I was wondering if he actually being in the military, he probably came through Fort Bragg and whatnot. And P also, you remember Mystical was part of the boot camp clique before No yep. Limit, but he was bigger when he was on No Limit. Yeah. Like, he kind of fizzled out with the boot camp clique thing, and then when No Limit came out and they signed Mystical, Mystical even got, he got bigger. I mean, he did people right because he was on Jive, and his deal with Jive was kind of, you know. Kinda, like, what was it, like 95.5 or something? Something like that. He had like the I mean, best distribution deal part, ever. Like, he had a yeah, he had the best distribution deal ever. They killed it with posters. Like you heard Mr. Servon, man. I mean, I never heard of people talking about they had the homeless guys rocking the shirts and, and paying the homeless people. I don't know nobody right. was doing that. That's I mean, that, that's crazy, yo. That is a genius move. A you know, back then homeless people always be on the corners back then. You always yeah. see homeless people on the corners back then. I don't know. I might have to get some of them to start rocking my shirts now. Not, oh, he said, uh, one of his artists is from Fayetteville, Juice God LP. Do we know who that is? Juice God. Oh, it sounds familiar. 
I, we know that rapper uh, Juice God, but he's out of um, is a Juice Lord. My bad, is Juice Lord, right? Juice Lord, Juice Lord, Juice Juice Lord, Lord. Out of Raleigh. Yeah, out of Raleigh. he's out of Raleigh. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to do our research on that. Yeah, man. Tap, plug us in, man. Plug us in. We we definitely gonna do some things. Like I said, we can write yeah. up, write up um, some blogs and have them on the show. All that. You know what I mean? Anything you wanna uh, shout out before we go? I know we about to hit that hour mark. And uh, as usual, shout out yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out the Underground Experience, BCH CEO. That's the new uh, write up I have on the artist, and we got a couple more coming. Um, of course, shout out to Fat. He's got a album that he just dropped, so I'm gonna do um, some kind of pub and write up on that one. Um, of course, everybody who's involved in the and everybody who's involved in the music scene right now, I, I see some things moving around that that definitely make me feel good about where certain things are going. So, we're just gonna keep everything moving as usual. I want to say shouts out to Mr. Servon. Um, rest in peace to DJ Polo. Rest in peace to Chino XL. I know people definitely. are talking about uh, it's a big deal that like Rock Kim got the last. Chino XL yeah. verse on his album and whatnot. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't expect that in a matter of like three days. Like both of them literally gone, man. We're losing a lot of people in hip hop. Not even just because of like gun violence, but we're getting everybody's getting old, man. And and natural causes is Health. taking oh. over, man. Health. Uh, just too, we just yeah, so many people in hip hop, man, it's gone, man. And it almost seems like we're losing like two or three people at a time every time, man. It really does. I just had to go out and get that uh, uh "Here to Save You All" album. You know what I'm saying? Just to go rock that again. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm 45. How old are you? 46. Man, we getting up there, man. Definitely got a. Uh, I would say one of the key things in life to to make life extend is don't is not stress. I mean, even if I don't care how hard your times are, man. If the more you stress, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's gonna kill you alone. Yeah, stress yeah. Uh, stress will kill you faster than a lot of things, man. Like it it uh, it'll tear your body down, man. Like you got to try not to stress. No matter what, I mean, we we were literally in a recession. I don't care what anybody says. We're in a recession. You know, inflation is crazy high still. Things are going. There's a lot of people out there hurting, but try not to stress, man. And you know, just try to get through it. Try to get through it, man, and bounce back, man. This is where you, you know. find out, you know, who you who you who you can find out who your tent poles are. Find out who the people who really ground you out are. You know what I mean? That's that's who the people you got to rely on. You can't. You know what though? I almost wish we were about the beef. Ain't worry about none of that. I almost wish we go back to the Native American days, though, man. I always felt like the Native Americans had it right, man. You know, just living off the land, and, and well, we don't follow buffalo no more, but just living off the land. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I felt like they had it right, man, and we just we called them dinosaurs and savages because they didn't want to you know, keep up with technology and they didn't care about technology. You know, they're just spiritual people that lived off the land and followed the Buffalo, man. You know, I, well, we, we about to wrap it up. We got three minutes to our mark. Um, tune in tomorrow, 6 PM. I'm, I'm moving music reviews to 6 PM. As you see, I went live, uh, not yesterday, but the day before and whatnot. So uh, my music, the the submissions are getting up there. So I like I gotta start banging out more and more reviews and whatnot. But uh, y'all tune in tomorrow and next <laughs> Friday we got who we got next Friday? Cooley High. Uh, next Friday. Hold on. Uh, Cooley High. Uh, next Friday we got uh, Cooley High. I had it here the whole time. Uh, next Friday, 
next Friday. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Pace one. Pace one. Pace one next Friday. All right, that'll be interesting. I just we just I just reviewed a song with Pace Ooh. one and and um ah uh, I forgot was it Drasmatic and Pace Drasmatic? one? Drasmatic yeah, Pace that one. shit was dope, yo. Yeah, that man. shit was bad though. After that 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 next week is Cooley High. We got some got some people coming up. Barbara Mack, uh, Minnesota Money Boss players, uh, Punchline. Ben Malik, you just said you got Diesel of the Rascals. Yeah, Rotten Rascals. I just reviewed one of his songs too, and I got another one to review. Yeah, man. Yeah, hey, hey, so we got Flo, uh, Willie, uh, Willie Scandals, Sauce from the Valley, and Sean Dawn of the Justice League. Uh, you know, little brother and all them. So definitely got got some people coming up, man. The man said it was big. Yeah, keeping it big. All right, well, we better wrap it up, man, till tomorrow. Peace. We out.